seen uh, from last game. I must protect the one. Your soul shall be mine. And Genji sticking in with his Zude. Which is good, just because you don't really want your opponent to have too much information about your other kind of decks. But very good curve, looking like a very good curve for when Genji's kind of side. You have the one drops, you can call it into a three drop, like the Imp Gang boss. And on Perna's side, his hand is actually pretty good too, especially with the Innervate. You can probably Innervate in Fandro and also follow up with the Pharaoh Spirit, uh, no, Pharaoh Rage with like 8 armor and also 4 attack. Just for that Temple kind of play, that's actually really, really good. The Teacher is kind of not bad too, and also picking up Teacher or the Fandro. But he actually might not choose to, but I feel like it's too good not to. Because if he actually coins into Fandro, he's actually forced to kind of remove it just because of how big of a threat it actually is. So Dire Wolf is actually being played out at the moment and just being removed straight up <laughs> straight up uh, with the uh, minions on board. Actually, he's going face. Wow, he's actually going face. That is very... Very interesting, just because I feel like Fandro is just such a strong card, especially if you have the cards to actually combo with it, like the Pharaoh Rage that we see, and also Power of the Wild too. That's also a possibility. But I understand, like you're wasting most of your resources on board to actually trade into this kind of creature, so and you can't really afford it. But but looking at this kind of tempo play that Perna has right now, that's actually very disgusting. All right, now you really need to remove this Fandral. It's because um, yeah, it's such a big threat that we've seen before with the combo of the Feral Rage, gaining eight armor and four attack. Yeah, saving the Beast of Sergeant, potentially use it on uh, on something else for more efficient kind of trades. If Gebas is possibly played out here, but then again, the Beast of Sergeant can't even remove this um, this uh, Violet Teacher. So going face with the Dire Wolf Alpha, we do see. The swipe, so that's gonna pot potentially be very to your hero power, so you can clean most of the board up, especially the token that the Imkar Paws is gonna spawn. But he picks it up Norwich instead. That's actually not bad too. You're gonna draw into more of your reactive type of cards like Wrath, and potentially a very big taunt such as the Ancient Ford that we've seen before. Oh, right, right. But you gain like the two more kind of mana with him, the um, Norwich. So, okay, so he uses Norwich to gain the. Two, oh yeah, right, the two mana instead rather than drawing. So that's not bad as well. So we will see the Abusive Sergeant potentially just trading into the Violet Teacher just because it's going to be a really, really big kind of threat and allows you to play the Sea Giant. So that's pretty huge too. Oh man, that is going to be very, very huge. I'm gonna. But then again, Perna does have... Oh, if you pop the Divine Shield right now, I don't feel like it's going to be good. I, I know that Perna might actually use the 2-2 um, uh, two, two tokens to trade into one of the 1-1s. One but you have to consider Swipe as well. But Double Swipe is being picked up too. Oh my god, that's actually a really, really devastating kind of hand. So Swipe is definitely going to be used here on the Sea Giant with the 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two tokens. And then another second swipe to clean off the board entirely, and relying on the two tokens on board to uh, contest the board, uh, whatever Genji actually plays out. Ooh, Imp Game Boss is pretty good to contesting these two tokens, and picking up Defender Argus to follow up later on in the game, that's pretty good too. But Perna, although he's on the cards, he does have the Azure Drake to back him up too, and also able to play Mire Lurker, Mire Keeper. Uh, spawning another 2-2 two, two kind of minions with it. Oh man, pick up the Wrath! That's really good to remove this end boss really cleanly. I would definitely remove it, just because uh, your opponent actually has the pos possibility of manipulating the card too, with like Defender of Argus or even Abusive Sergeant to actually remove your um, SR Drake. Okay. Okay, picking up the Dark Peddler. Let's see what kind of one drop he gets. Both the Imp Game Boss and the Dragon's Egg, that would be possibly really good too. But you can possibly make it like a really big taunt with the Shield Barrier with the Defender of Argus as well. Or you could just generate like three kind of taunts with the Dark Peddler. My shield for Argus. All right. All 
Alright, so another Zerdrake is being played. So these taunts are actually not that hard for a Perna to actually remove. Picking up the living room, that's really good. Able to remove almost everything so effectively. And you also can wrap for two to end draw a card as well. That's actually really good. Or oh, is it for three? Oh, it's for three! That's even more devastating! Alright, so using 2-2 to trade into the MK boss, yeah, using a Sir Drake to trade the big shield barrier. You could possibly use the Living Roots to just remove the uh, Defender of Argus, but you don't necessarily need to. You can just Hero Power and just remove both the one ones. Or you, yeah, and you can follow up with the Living Roots as well. As well. Yeah, 4 Bork is always good. I like it. 4 Bork, four bork with Living Roots. Follow up with the Emperor next turn just as a very big body to try to seal the game as well. So staring down at like 12 points of damage, or oh, 13, so he actually has lethal the following turn too. So Perna taking the finals 3-0 once again.